Well, the scripture for today comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and we're going to have an alternate reading, which means that I'll read the first verse, and we'll all respond with the verse after that, and we'll keep going back and forth until the end. So once you've found the scripture, um, there's Bibles in the pews, or uh, you can look on in the screen behind me. Uh, Please stand as able once you've found the scripture. Again, that's John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And we'll have an alternate reading. May the Lord bless the reading of God's word for us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. We're beginning a new sermon series for the whole school year that we're calling All in Christ, Abundant Life and Love in Christ. And so, you know, at the beginning of a new school year, it marks new time for a lot of us, especially for those in school. I know there's a lot of new beginnings that we have, uh, but even if you're not in school, um, you know, I haven't been in school for a while. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how long, so you you won't figure out my age, but (laughs) um, for a lot of us, I I think especially here at Living Grace Ministry, you know, we have new people here. There's a lot of excitement as we begin a a new school year, and I think there's an opportunity to start fresh in a lot of ways, Uh, to start fresh in our spiritual lives, to start fresh um, in a new season of life, and so we want to give you permission. We want to invite you to start fresh with us today in this new school year. Um, And so, you know, you you might be thinking like, okay, maybe there's been a time in your life that you wanted to start something fresh. You wanted to do something. And maybe you had this natural question, where do I begin? You know, maybe some of you wanted to do something like, I don't know, you wanted to make your own website. Where do I begin? How do I even get started with that? Do I have to learn how to program or do I have to find a hosting site? How does that work? Maybe you want to write and publish a book. And you're like, where do I begin? You know, I don't know how to write a book. How do I start organizing my ideas? What do I start with? Do I start with chapter one or do I start with naming the characters? Where do I begin? You know, maybe some of you are thinking, I want to be a healthier me. You know, I want to start working out and be healthy, but where do I begin? How do I pick a gym? How do I start an exercise regimen? I've never regularly exercised before. That was me, friends, about a year ago. I started a new exercise regimen, and it was scary. It's scary to start something for the first time. That's probably the hardest step. You know the whole saying like, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step? Well, friends, I think that first step is the hardest because a lot of us wonder, where do we begin? And maybe for a lot of us, we want to know where we begin in our spiritual life. You know, I think that a lot of times when people come to school for the first time, or you come back from summer, or, you know, there's this new opportunity for us to begin new things, and maybe to begin again in your spiritual life. I know some folks, when they come to college, maybe they weren't very religious before. You know, maybe they, they, you know, at one time, they were regular church attenders, and they, they were growing in their spiritual life. But maybe something happened along the way. I don't know what it is. Maybe just that passion tapered off. Maybe you had a conflict at your old church. Maybe there's something that happened that disillusioned you. You know, you started to have questions that didn't have good answers, you know. Um, And maybe you stopped at some point. And you want to know, where do I begin again? Maybe it's not quite that dramatic, but some of you, you've been in a slump a little bit. You've been in a little bit of a plateau spiritually, and you want to jumpstart your spiritual life. You want to be more on fire. And you're thinking, okay, new sermon series, new year, this is a good opportunity. Where do I begin? Friends, I think that's a question that I ask myself. Um, You know, I was sharing uh, over the summer, uh, I I try to share very honestly about my life, uh, because I know, obviously, I'm not perfect. I'm someone who's trying to follow after Christ. I'm someone who's trying to be more faithful, you know, but I make mistakes, you know, and and one of the things that I realized is that I can't just come up here and tell everyone else how to do it if I myself am not doing it. And if I'm struggling, I want to be honest about my struggles to help you so that you realize, well, hey, 
know, the pastor isn't perfect, you know, but I'm learning. And as I learn, I want to uh, pass on what I've learned to try to encourage you. And one of the things that I faced um, facing a new school year, I, I, to be honest, I face this every school year. But for some reason, uh, for those of you who don't know, I was serving two churches last year. And over the summer, it became one church. I only serve LGM now. And that was a great thing. Um, but I think for me, I've put a lot of pressure on myself. And going into this new school year, I felt really unprepared. You know, just a few weeks ago, I was thinking about this new school year and thinking like, oh my goodness, there's so many things coming up and we're not prepared, I'm not prepared. And, you know, I just started to freak out. And I went into a little bit of a spiritual slump. I, I wasn't praying as much. I wasn't reading my Bible as much. I was worrying more than I was praying, you know? I don't know if you've ever been there. Have you ever been in a slump? Then you, you can probably relate to what I was going through. And I was wondering the same thing that we're talking about today. Where do I begin again? How do I get that groove back where I'm with Christ? How, where, how do I get back that feeling that I've lost? Friends, we know, you know that faith isn't always about feelings, but it's hard when you don't feel like worshiping, when you don't feel like praying, when you don't feel like reading the Bible, when you don't feel like obeying, you don't feel like coming to church, right? It's tough. So where do we begin? And friends, this sermon series in a lot of ways is a result of what God has revealed to me. In fact, uh, I was telling some folks that we were gonna do a completely different um, beginning sermon series. I was gonna make it topical. I was gonna talk about like, um, I think I called it counterfeit, and I was trying to find a counterfeit dollar bill to show you guys. You know, counterfeits to joy, and, and I was gonna pick topics based on that. But what I realized is that where we need to begin, where I need to begin, is with one simple thing. And the way I found this was I was talking to um, the senior pastor of the Korean church, um, Reverend Cho, and I meet with him every other week. And uh, we sat down and I was telling him about my slump. I said, Reverend Cho, you know, I'm really struggling. I'm really anxious. You know, I don't know what to do. And this is what Reverend Cho told me. He said, Steve, you know, when I get like that, what I try to think of is what advice would I give to a congregation member, if they came to me and they told me the problem that they were going through, what would I do? You know, what would I say to them to do? And so, you know, I started thinking about, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, you know, pray, read your Bible and all this stuff. And he's like, okay, well, then why don't you do that? And what I realized as I was feeling, um, you know, slumpish, <laughs> as I was having a hard time getting started, where I needed to go back to, it wasn't just about prayer. It wasn't just about reading scripture. Because for me, a lot of times when I fail at that, it's about me. I try to do it, and I try really hard. And when I fail at it, then it becomes my failure, right? Like, so, so it becomes about my lack of discipline. Like, oh, I really should pray. And I tried really hard, and like, well, I couldn't pray. There's something wrong with me, right? I don't have enough discipline. I'm not good enough. I'm not spiritual enough. Somehow it becomes about me. But what I realized that I would tell another person, and I want to share with you, and I had to tell myself, is where we start is not with me, not with my effort, but we start with Jesus. I know it seems so basic. It seems so elementary. But friends, I want to share with you that this is the absolute truth. And I want to convince you today that if we can begin with Jesus, you can begin again wherever you are at in your spiritual life. You're far from God. You don't even know God. You're not even sure he exists. Maybe you would believe he exists, but you're not living like a Christ follower. You're very far from that. You're in this spiritual slump. You're in this really dry place. You don't know how to get back. Friends, where we start always is with Jesus. That's where the gospel of John starts. And it starts with a very familiar refrain. In verse one, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. One of the cool things about the Gospel of John, the way it starts, is it starts the exact same way that Genesis starts, the Old Testament, the first book of the Bible, right? How does the, the Genesis start? Well, I just told you, it starts the same way, right? It says, in the beginning, right? In the beginning. And so friends, uh, John, the gospel writer, was very intentional in, in choosing this phrase, in the beginning, because he wants to show you that this is a beginning. 
And Jesus was there in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is a very confusing uh, statement for a lot of us. You know, uh, one time I I was looking up things about this passage, and uh, I, I just looked it up on the internet. You know, the Word was God. And what I found was there's a forum where there's like young Christians asking questions about the Bible. And one of the people said, okay, we believe that the Bible is the Word of God, and it says the Word was God. And it seems like, you know, that's supposed to be Jesus, which it is, right? So they're like, okay, so the Word was God, Jesus was God, and it says that um, the Bible is the Word. So does that mean Jesus is the Bible? And they're like so confused, you know? And maybe you're wondering that. Friends, there is an even greater word. Yes, the Bible is wonderful. It is a great way for us to connect to God. But the true word of God, the incarnate, made flesh word of God that encapsulates God's will, God's uh, desires for us, everything that God wants, that is perfectly encapsulated in the person of Jesus Christ. That's what it means when it says, he is the word, the word of God. And it says, he was with God in the beginning, right? And so John is making a theological point here. He says, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And so what he's connecting is the Genesis account of God creating the heavens and the earth, of creating light. Let there be light, and then there was light, right? In the beginning, it was all darkness. In the beginning, there was no light, but God created that. And John's point is saying that God did all of that with Jesus, through Jesus. Jesus was there in the beginning, right? Because he is the son of God. He is part of the Godhead, right? And so in Jesus, God created everything. Why is this important, friends? It's important because when you talk about starting anew, starting anything anew, isn't what you're really talking about creation? Isn't that what it is? right? Creating something new, you know, maybe taking old parts and refreshing them, dusting them off and making them new, recycling them, or starting something new that you didn't have before. Isn't that what we're talking about, creation? New life? Isn't that what we really want? Is we want new life in Christ. And so in this passage, it is very clear. Where do we get life from? Verse 4, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Verse 3, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. So friends, it's very easy to connect that to Genesis and say, okay, so nothing in this world has been made without Jesus. But it's also saying that nothing can be made without Jesus. So friends, if you want to start afresh in your spiritual life, if you want to do something really cool for God, you want want to know where you begin, you begin with Jesus. Because the Bible is very clear. Jesus is the source of all life. He is the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This verse is very meaningful for me. Because I'm someone who struggled with depression uh, throughout my life. I went through a very severe depression when I was in seminary. And again, uh, about five years ago, when I started doing two different churches. And there's times where darkness feels terrible. Darkness, to me, the darkness of depression is just not wanting to do anything, just wanting to disappear in a hole. You don't want to be around anyone it really affects your feelings, right? I mean, you just don't feel like doing anything, right? And friends, this was so encouraging to me to read this verse when I was coming out of my slump, to be reminded, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness cannot overcome it. And friends, so for me, when I was getting out of my slump and I was thinking about, okay, how do I get back? Where do I need to start? And I said, okay, let's start from the beginning. Let's do the things I used to do before. And so I started reading the Bible, and I started praying. And I want to be very honest with you. When I started doing that, and I started kind of disciplining myself to read the Bible and to pray, I want to be really honest. I didn't feel anything. First day I did it, I was very diligent. 
felt nothing. I felt really dead inside. I still felt darkness. But friends, I, I thought to myself, okay, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, let's keep on doing this. Let's be consistent. And what I realized is that let's not focus on my failure. Let's not focus on my effort. Let's not focus on my discipline. Let's just focus on Jesus. So I did. I, I, I took out the gospel and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do my fancy reading plan. I'm just going to go back to the gospel. I just started reading Luke. And I just started reading and reading about Jesus. And then I started reading John. It started at the beginning of John. I just started reading more and more about Jesus. And then I just started praying to Jesus and saying, Jesus, be with me. Jesus, I want to know you again. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are God. I didn't feel any of it. I didn't feel like praying, but I just kept doing that. I just kept praying. Jesus, you are God. Jesus, you are great. And then I started listening to songs about Jesus. In fact, the closing song we're going to sing is a song that I just kept, I put it on a loop. It's called In Christ Alone. In Christ Alone. I, I can only do things through Christ. And I just kept listening to that. In Christ Alone. Da, 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 da. We're going to sing it, so you'll, you'll know what I mean <laughs> in a little bit. But, um, you know, I just kept singing that song, that refrain, in Christ alone. In Christ alone, I place my trust. In Christ alone. And I just kept doing that. And after a couple of days, I started to feel joy again. Some of that darkness started to dissipate again. And I wasn't focused on myself, like, hey, I'm doing it. Look at how I'm praying. Look at how I'm reading the Bible. I wasn't focused on any of that. All I was focused on was Jesus. It's like, Jesus, you are the source of this joy. Jesus, you are the one bringing me out of this darkness. And it was glorious. It was great. You know, friends, I'm not perfect. And nor is any of us. And if we do what, what I'm suggesting, go back to Jesus. If you do that, everything in your life won't get better overnight. You know, because one of the reasons, you might be wondering why. Why doesn't it work that way? Well, friends, I have some suspicions why it works that way. I think one is because when we are recognizing that Jesus is the source of life, let's not also forget that he is God. God is greater than a king. God is greater than a master. If Jesus just showed up whenever we prayed, like a vending machine, like a magic genie, right? And just like, I'm feeling off and I'm like, okay, Jesus, help me. And then, you know, oh, I feel great. You know, just like that. It's just magic. Then who's God? Who's the master? I'm the master, right? I'm the God. And I'm commanding my servants to bless me, to make me feel joy. It doesn't work that way, friends. We need to recognize that he is God. Yes, he is the source of all life. But it's not God serving us like a slave, like a genie. God is so gracious, so loving, that it is in his nature to give us life, to give us these good things. But friends, I think sometimes, you know, it doesn't come right away. It doesn't come at our beck and call because maybe if it did, then we would be mistaken into thinking that we're the gods, that we're the ones in control. Instead of being completely reliant upon God and saying, God, I submit myself before you again. God, I need to find the source of all light and love. So Jesus, in your mercy, in your kindness, in your grace, can you show up again? And friends, I think a prayer, pray that humbly, consistently. I don't think God will deny you that. I think God will honor a prayer like that in sincerity, in God's time. We can't order them around, but God will deliver. And that's the testimony of my life, is God has always delivered. Friends, I want to talk about how we do this, because that sounds fine and good to say, let's go back to Jesus. Let's make this about Jesus. And, and I want to just share a, a very important thing that I've learned. Um, and so I was sharing with uh, Reverend Cho again about this sermon series. And so as I was coming out of my slump, you know, I told Reverend Cho, I said, okay, Reverend Cho, I'm coming out of my slump. And you know what brought me out of my slump? Jesus. So I feel like, you know, we already set this theme all in Christ. And I don't think I fully understood what that meant. But we're going to go back to the Gospels. We're going to go back to John. We're going to talk about Jesus. And Reverend Cho, in his wisdom, this is what he said to me. He said, Steve, I just want to remind you of something. And I want you to remind your congregation to remind the people of LGM. And so this is straight from Reverend Cho. This is what he wanted to say to you. He wanted to say this. Jesus is not just a concept. 
And I thought about that. Jesus is not just a concept. And I thought about a lot of the times when we approach Jesus, we talk about Jesus. Like, oh yeah, Jesus is good and Jesus is great. Just kind of the way we would talk about like a celebrity, someone we don't really know. You know, or, or just some concept out there, you know, like, like we talk about Jesus like we would talk about goodness or we would talk about faith or joy, you know. Jesus, it's not very personal. And friends, one of the, the, the mysterious things about faith is that we believe that even though Jesus lived physically on this earth 2,000 years ago, he still lives. He died on a cross he was resurrected, and by the Holy Spirit, we can still experience him today. And for me, when I was going through my slump, um, that's what brought me out of it. It wasn't me praying. It was Jesus. It was the spirit of Jesus that brought me out of it, right? And so, friends, we need to access, we need to encounter, we need to experience the living Christ. And that's not just about a concept, there was a man once who had a lot of struggles with prayer. He's like, man, I don't know how to pray. And he really struggled with this a lot. Um, and uh, he found something that was starting to help him. And this man became very sick. And he became so sick uh, that his daughter um, called uh, the local pastor, who was brand new, was a new guy, and said, hey, can you visit my dad? And, and so, um, you know, he came to visit the sick man. And, um, you know, the, the daughter's there, and they're talking for a while. And after a while, the daughter excuses herself and says, Dad, I'll leave you some time alone with the new pastor. So she leaves the room. And so it's just the, the sick man and this new pastor. And so the sick man says to the pastor, like, Pastor, um, can, you, can you close the door? He's like, okay, sure. He closes the door. And he's like, Pastor, um, I want to ask you something. He's like, okay, um, go for it. He's like, I'm not a very religious man. In all my life, I've struggled with prayer. And I wanted to know how to pray. So your predecessor, the previous pastor, I asked him how I'm supposed to pray. And so he got me this really thick book that was written by this German theologian about prayer. And I went to the first paragraph, and I didn't understand half the words. And so I got really discouraged. And I thought, man, prayer is hard. You know, just a normal person like me, how can I ever hope to pray without going to seminary, without learning about all of these advanced concepts? And so I was really discouraged about it. And I was just at the bar with my friend. And I was telling him, you know, I really want to learn how to pray, but I don't know how to do it. And, and so his friend looked at him and, and, and said, hey, well, you're talking to me, right? Isn't just prayer talking to God? Why don't you talk to me the, the way, um, why don't you talk to God the way that you're talking to me, just on this stool? He's like, okay, sure, why not? I've tried all this other stuff. It didn't work, right? So he went home, and he got a chair, and he put it beside him. And, and so he started talking to Jesus like he was sitting in that chair. The first time he did it, he felt really weird. He's like, man, I'm just talking to a chair. What if someone walks in? They're going to think I'm crazy, but the more he did it, the more he enjoyed it. And after a while, he just found himself, you know, for hours on end, talking to Jesus in this empty chair. And so he's like, Reverend, I've been doing that every day, and it's been wonderful. But I have to ask you, in your expertise, is that prayer? Did I figure it out? And the pastor looks at him, and he smiles, and he says, friends, if that's not prayer, then I don't know what is. And so the sick man, you know, kind of smiles, and he's very content with that answer. And so several weeks pass, and the pastor doesn't hear from the sick man. The man's too sick that he can't show up at church. So he hasn't seen him for several weeks. So he decides to call um, the daughter. And he calls the daughter, and the daughter is crying. And he's like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? And the daughter says, Pastor, my father, he died this morning. And he said, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that. It's like, but, but Pastor, um, he, did, he died peacefully, but something really weird happened But before he died. Like, we were talking. We were eating breakfast like we normally do. And then he got really quiet. And before he died, he kind of leaned over, and he laid his head on an empty chair. Isn't that a beautiful picture of communing with Jesus, of prayer? of laying your head on the lap of Jesus. 
Friends, I envy that story. I've told that story before, and I've told it just like as a nice story, but it's a story that challenges me. Is that what my prayer life is like? Not word for word. I, like, I'm not trying to be legalistic about it. I'm not telling you guys all to grab an empty chair and, you know, but, but that intimacy, that closeness, that connection to Jesus. Are you like that man that you would enjoy spending time with Jesus hours on end? I shared this with the youth group last night that Reverend Cho has been challenging me. He said, Steve, something that I started doing is um, I started spending more time with Jesus. I was like, oh, how much time? You know, I'm thinking like, I don't know, like an hour, something like that. He said, I spend at least three hours with Jesus every day. So what is your reaction to hearing that? I'll tell you what my reaction was. Three hours? Three hours every day. You know, and I just kind of looked at it. I didn't say that because I didn't want Reverend Cho to be like, you're on spiritual or, you know. Like, so I'm just, I just look at him and I'm like, like I take a sip of my coffee and I'm like, three hours with Jesus every day. I couldn't do that. I couldn't possibly do that. And Reverend Cho looks at me and, he, and like he's not boasting. He's not bragging. He's just talking about his life. And he says, Pastor Steve, it's so wonderful. I started doing this and it was hard. I didn't know what to do. You know, and he said this not to shame me, but... I mean, it's true. He said, we can sit through a, a movie for three hours, but to pray for three hours is hard for us, right? And I thought about that. I was like, yeah, I just, I just like saw like Guardians of the Galaxy last week, and that was like two and a half hours, and I had no problem with that. But to think to pray, to spend Jesus, time with Jesus two and a half hours, I'm think, there's no way I could possibly do that, you know? And, and, and so he said this to me, and this, this is what floored me. He said, Steve, last night, I spent so much time with Jesus. It was so good that I just lost track of time. I think it was like six or seven hours. I was like, what? It was like double, six or seven hours? Like that's more than a lot of people sleep. You know, and then as Reverend Cho was sharing, um, I didn't feel like shamed by that, but I was like, I want that. I want that desire. I want to spend time with Jesus. I want to spend time with Jesus where it's not a chore. Yeah, have you ever tried to pray? Has ever, ever anyone encouraged you to pray or to do a quiet time and you, you tried to do it and it was like pulling teeth? It was like the most difficult thing you've ever done. And then after you did it, you feel really spiritual. You're like, I did it. But the next day you try to do it, you're like, oh my gosh, it's so hard, right? And then you skip a day and then you feel terrible. Friends, compare and contrast that to Reverend Cho spending six, seven hours with Jesus and just losing himself in Jesus, to the man um, putting his head on the chair, spending several hours a day just talking and conversing with Jesus, looking forward to it. That's the highlight of their days, friends. Is it the highlight of your day to spend with Jesus? I say this not to shame you, but to give you a new expectation. Friends, if Jesus is the source of all life, if in him everything was created that ever will be created, he's the source of all grace, all light, all love, then don't you think spending time with him would be the greatest thing ever? And when you try to spend time with him, because I started doing this, I said, okay, I can't do three hours, but let's try at least an hour a day. I tried it at first. Actually, the first day, I was pretty amped. First day went pretty well. Second day, I didn't know what to say. I sat there. It was the morning. And, and I tried to pray to God, and I ran out of things. So I started, like, playing the guitar. And then I was like, no, Jesus is not a concept. I'm not just going to sing about Jesus. I need to talk to him. You know, so even as I was singing, I just tried to imagine that Jesus was right there, you know? And, and after a while, I got tired, and I just kind of slumped over on my couch, Right? And I'm like, I can pray to Jesus like this. Jesus is right there, right? So I'm like, pray, Jesus, thank you so much. And after like 45 minutes, I have like drool on my face. And I'm like, you know, I wake up and I felt so much shame. I felt like the worst pastor in the world, you know? I, I, I just imagine in that moment, I, I just felt like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you know that story where Jesus is about to go to the cross and he takes a few of the disciples with him and he's like, hey, stand, watch, and pray. The hour is near. And Jesus goes and he prays and he prays so hard that, that the, the, the capillaries in his head burst and blood is running down like sweat. And he comes back and the disciples are cutting Z's, right? They're, they're, they're sleeping, they're snoring, and he says, hey, you can't even stay awake for an hour to pray? 
says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I felt like that. I was like, oh, Lord, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I got to tell you, friends, I know I'm, it's kind of it's funny, you know, thinking of your pastor drooling and all that stuff. Like, yeah, it's not that funny. It's pretty sad. <laughs> but, you know, the truth of the matter is I wanted to stop. I felt so ashamed. And I said, you know, I'm just going to stop. Let's just not even try. I already just wasted 45 minutes just cutting these. But I didn't. I kept going. I kept spending time with Jesus. And before I knew it, you know, at first I'm watching my clock. I'm like, has it been an hour yet? I'm like, no, it's been five minutes. <laughs> Steve, keep praying. And I kept doing it. And I kept sp- spending time with Jesus. And I just started, like, like when I didn't know what to do, I, I just opened up, you know, John. I'm like, let's read John 1 again. And I just read John 1, 1 through 5, the same passage we just read. I just kept reading it over and over again. I remember um, this old prayer that I want to teach you in a moment that monks used to pray. And when they would pray for hours on end, they would pray what we call a mantra. You ever hear that? Right? It's a prayer that you repeat over and over and over again. It's a way of centering and focusing their thoughts. I started doing that for a while. Right? I started listening to a gospel song, and I started to try to focus on Jesus. And after a while, I just started praying, and I just felt like so much joy. And after a while, like an hour and a half had passed, in, in an additional hour and a half, not counting the nap, friends. And I didn't want it to end. Friends, how can we spend time with Jesus? I want to share with you a few really quick practical things that go along with this idea. Jesus is not just a concept. Spend time with Jesus. Don't don't just talk about him. Talk to him. Seek him. Don't just seek the stuff he can give you. This is what a lot of us do. We don't really want Jesus. I know that that sounds a little harsh, but a lot of us, we don't want Jesus. We want him to bless us. What we want is Jesus to be an accessory on our life, to enhance the life that we want. But friends, in Jesus is the source of all life. Jesus is better than anything else. And so don't seek the stuff. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then everything else will come unto you, right? So seek first Jesus. Make him your object. When you set out to pray, don't just start praying a laundry list of the things you want. I want to recommend, start praying for Jesus. Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, help me to know you. Second thing, meditate, um, that's not mediate, sorry, meditate on a worship song. That's something I do very often. If I'm having problems praying, there are people who've written these songs out of their faith. You know, maybe listen, listen to In Christ Alone, Cornerstone, a song that centers on Jesus. And just let that song bring you to a place where you are in the presence of Jesus. Uh, Another thing you can do is repeat that mantra prayer. This is uh, what what they call the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And they would repeat this in Latin or whatever language their country was from. And they would just keep repeating it over and over again. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. There are times where I pray mantras. I don't pray this. I I make up my own mantra. But it's always Christ-focused. Sometimes, like, there's times where I'm so, like, uh, anxious about things, I can't sleep. Does that happen to anyone? You don't have to raise your hand. But maybe you've, like, your mind is so active. You're so worried about things that you can't fall asleep. That's happened to me. And so sometimes my mantra is, Jesus Christ, help me sleep. Jesus, help me sleep. Jesus, help me sleep. Jesus, and I keep praying that until I fall asleep. Sometimes it's, Jesus, save me. I need you. Jesus, save me. I need you. Just keep repeating that over and over and over again. Friends, um, another thing you can do is something that I call the Fantastic Four. And you might have noticed that in your bulletins, we put scripture in there, and we call it the Fantastic Four. And I have this cool, yeah, (laughs) that's from the the comic book, Fantastic Four, uh, which I like comics, so sorry. (laughs) Um, But Fantastic Four is, we're going to recommend four scriptures for you to read every week. To, just to kind of center you, to give you a place to start devotionally. I know there's a lot of people that want to have quality time, quiet time, whatever you want to call it, QT, a devotional time with God, and you don't know where to start. We want to help you, friends. And so these are four scripture, and it's from 1 John, not the Gospel of John. It's a letter, right? But it's written by John, and it's in the same style as the Gospel of John. So um, it's a good place to start, especially as we're talking about the Gospel of John today. And so we're going to give you four scriptures because I realize that if you, 
if this is not a discipline for you, then to do it every day may be very hard. It may be very discouraging. But I want to encourage you, can you do it at least four times this week? The, the scripture is very short. And to, to also help you, if you go to the Living Grace Ministry um, Facebook page, um, this is, you don't even have to have Facebook, I think. You just need to find it, right? Just look up, you know, Facebook Living Grace Ministry, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and you'll find it, right? Um, we, we will have a... Uh, like reflection questions, three questions on each passage to just help you in your time that you spend with Jesus. And so we want to help you, friends. Let us go unto God together. And I want to end again with the same thought. Friends, Jesus is not just a concept. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the one that I stake my entire life on. And my question for you is, what is he to you? Has he been a concept? Has he been like a long lost relative, like that uncle that you never see who lives in another country? Is that Jesus to you? Is Jesus just like, like a nice person you talk about, like Abraham Lincoln or you know, some, someone from history? Or is he your Lord, of the, your Lord of Lords, your King of Kings, your best friend, the one that you wanna spend time with the most in this world? Friends, if you wanna begin again, we need to go into Jesus. And so let's do this together. And kind of keep